What's up guys? How you all doing? Hey, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be checking out, this is going to be part two of our next cloud. We're going to be checking out some speeds since one of them is using USB 2.0 and the other one is using USB 3.0 on the Raspberry Pi uh, 4 uh, platform. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on MI Sperry. Okay guys, so as we said in the intro, we're gonna be checking out the two different uh, Raspberry Pi platforms. One using USB 2.0, which is on one of the Raspberry Pi uh, version three B plus platforms. And then the other one is on the newly released Raspberry Pi uh, version four system, which has the USB 3.0, which is what we're gonna be trying with. So got everything hooked up. If you saw the other video, um, basically that same method, I built both devices that way. They both are using a UCS one, in fact, I still have uh, the package that it was in. It's used, both of them are using the same 16 gigabyte high performance uh, UCS1, which is a uh, uh, 95, 95 megabytes per second. So that way we don't have a whole lot of latency or at least the latency as far as processing and whatnot are, is the same. The 248 up here is our basically version three. And then 103 is our version uh, four Pi. So this one's the speedier one or at least we hope that it should be. And then this one should be the little bit slower one. So first thing we need to do is let's go ahead and check on the RAID status, shall we? Sudo MDADM and do the detail on our dev MD0, which was our RAID volume that we created. So we'll do that on both of these. But yeah, I know that you can't really see all of it um, because of my picture, but they look like they're both working. So they both are working good. State is clean on both of these. So they are up and running. The RAID volumes are working just fine. So we should be good to go. What we're gonna try to do is pull this up and we're gonna drag and drop one of my videos. So let's go ahead and drag. I think you can just drag and drop. So I'm going to try that now and we'll see how fast they go. So we're dragging and dropping. So we should get uh, about 11 minutes is what it's saying on the Raspberry Pi uh, version 3B+. Now this file, let me bring this up here, is approximately, if you look down here, is approximately about 2.74 gigabytes. So that's fairly good size. So it looks like it's gonna take about 14, 15 minutes. So I'm not gonna make you guys sit here for 10, 15 minutes, but I will go ahead and start a timer. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and start that. I know we're a few seconds uh, late on that. It sounds like my children are leaving, so they're hollering back and forth. But in any case, we'll let this stopwatch run. And then that way uh, I can kind of time how long it took. And when it's complete, I will show you. Okay guys, so there we go. So it took about 18 minutes. I was a little slow to stop it, but that's okay because we were slow to start. But I noticed halfway through that it got done around 15 minutes uploading, but then it took another uh, about three minutes to process the data. And then now it is finally uh, right here on the uh, drive. So it took about 18 minutes total for it to do its thing. So let's go ahead and reset our stopwatch. Now that we've done that, and we're gonna now try the next one. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over here and we're gonna drag and drop our video onto our Raspberry Pi 4. So let's try that. So I'm gonna hit go on that one. That one's saying it's about 10 minutes. I'm gonna start our stopwatch. So there's our stopwatch. Oh, nope, there's our stopwatch. Oh, doggone it, stupid windows. There we go. Okay, so it's saying it's gonna take about 10 minutes for that one. Now, well, let's see what the difference will be. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and we'll let that uh, let that run. Okay guys, so we're finished uploading and processing and it is significantly less. It's about, uh, you know, what, eight minutes less. So it's almost, it's almost half the time uh, less to go to the Raspberry Pi 4 using USB 3. So it still takes a while, still takes about 10 minutes, but I mean, that's pretty good for 2.7 or whatever that was, uh, what was that? It was like 2.7, four gigs yeah 2.74 gigs i'm gonna pull this over here so you can see it <clears throat> 2.74 gigs so it was pretty good uh, uh at reducing the overall uh speed now something that i found that's a little bit difficult uh to do is i was going to stream uh this to different devices now the streaming is a little bit difficult um i'm gonna go ahead and click it and it has its own movie player Okay, so it has its own video player. So what I'm gonna do, I'm trying to 
pause myself. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I can't stream it from these different devices uh, just like that. I mean, there is a share uh, thing where you can send a link. Um, I'm not real sure how this will work on a mobile device, but we'll give it a shot. So let me go grab a couple of mobile devices. And what we'll do is we'll stream this video on probably three different devices, the computer right here, but then we'll also do it. I also have one of my tablets and uh, actually I actually have two tablets and then my phone. So we may take and do some stress tests of that nature. We'll stream it on like two or three different devices if that's possible and uh, see how it goes. So let me go get some set up and uh, we'll uh, be back here in a second. Okay guys, so I got some stuff set up here. So first off, we're gonna do the Raspberry Pi version three and we'll see how it goes. And I got a few different things that we're gonna go through on this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start some streaming here. So I'm gonna click this one. All right, I'm gonna mute that, but we'll get that one started. I also have my Surface tablet here. I'm gonna go ahead and start it as well on it. So I've got it running on my Surface. So there's me talking, set that over here. All right, I also have my cell phone that's hooked up to this. So I'm going to press play, but basically there we go. So there it is. So there I am going on my cell phone. And then I also have an old uh, Apple tablet down here. I wish I could show it to you. Here, I can show it to you. It's just based down here right at my side. So I've got this right here. I'm gonna press the button so you can see it. So it's taking a little bit to buffer, but it did come up. Let's see, with Apple, you have to like go ahead and push play. Looks like it's maybe taking a little longer to buffer, but it looks like it's now going now. So there we go. So I got it maximized. So I've got everything running. Nothing seems to be, nothing seems to be lagging. Put all this next to me so I can see it all. It looks like everybody is working, so it looks like it's having no problem. Uh, nobody seems to be buffering. Everything seems to be rolling okay. Let's check out the network. What I'm gonna do is there's a, a, a command, or at least a, a app that you can download called nload, and you can type in nload WLAN zero, or whichever one, ethernet, ETH zero, ethernet one, two, whatever you have, and it will give you some uh, statistics on the uh, rates of bits going in and out basically so it's showing incoming up here at the top outgoing here at the bottom so uh, of course a lot is going to be outgoing because it's streaming down to my different devices so i can see that it's it's around 40 megabits a second is the average down here if you want to look at it so that's pretty good uh wirelessly looks like everybody is still still going yeah everybody's still going i can even see in the background here uh this is still going so I haven't seen any interruption in stream. The surface buffers every now and then. I don't really, I don't know why, but it is buffering every now and then. So that could be the surface or that could be the wireless uh, connection could be starting to get, you know, loaded up. I'm not sure, but it is buffering. Okay, so I just wanna make that little, little note. All right, so that's going okay. Let's check out the processor on this thing. So I'm gonna do a top uh, to check out the processor here. So far as our CPU utilization, looks like it's doing pretty good. Uh, memory wise, we've got pretty low free memory here. Um, we got, we're out of swap. So we're using 100% of our swap space. So RAM is kind of an issue. Now with the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, doesn't have anywhere near the memory that uh, the Raspberry Pi 4 does. So we may see some, some increase uh, so far as at least some more freed memory uh, on the Raspberry Pis, considering we only have, I think, one gig. So now one thing that I wanted to test is what happens if a hard drive fails? Will the stream stop? So I can actually test that. I actually have, uh, basically, I can cut the power to one of my hard drives and see what happens if we do a hard drive failure. So let me go ahead and do that. So I just cut the power to one of the hard drives. So I haven't seen anything yet. Now the iPad locked up. The phone's still going fine. The Surface is doing all right. For some reason, the iPad, I don't know what it's doing. So I may have lost one device. And again, that could be just the wireless connection or something. I don't know. Could be something going on. Because I mean, I know I'm not the only one 
doing stuff wirelessly in my house right now. But I wanted a realistic test. I don't want to be on some isolated network. Let's go ahead and check the volume. We should see the volume uh, degraded now. So we should see uh, if we do the MDADM details. And yes, it is. So we're showing that hard drive as removed. We're showing uh, the volume as degraded. So let's go ahead and add it back in, shall we? So to add it back in, we're gonna go ahead and power it back up. Okay, and we gotta wait for it to come back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a listing on the device tables. And right now it's only showing the B device, but we'll give it a few seconds to boot up. Aha, there it is. So there's SDA1. So now to reinsert this back into the volume since it's been removed, you simply do a sudo MDADM and we're gonna do a dash dash add and then you have to tell it what volume you wanna add it to. So it's the MD0 volume is our RAID volume and then what disk. So we're gonna do a device SDA1 is the disk that we're gonna add back in. So re-added. So now let's go back and do our details and we should see that it'll start resyncing. Yes, okay, so active, degraded, but it's recovering, okay? So it sees spare and it sees that it's rebuilding it. So it should start resyncing that. Now to check on how long it's gonna take, which, oh boy, it's gonna be a while probably, we can do a cat of the, of the slash proc slash MD stat file. And so it's telling us it's gonna take about 7,000 minutes to recover it. So that's, that's a while, but the fact of the matter is it is rein reinserting it, it is resyncing it, it's rebuilding it. So it should sync it back up and you should be good. So there is a hard drive failure and didn't really stop anything. Looks like the iPad has recovered as well. Looks like I'm still running here, still streaming, still streaming. So everything seems to be still streaming. So that looks good for the Raspberry Pi 3. So let's move on to the Raspberry Pi 4 and let's see how that works. All right, so I got things set up with the Raspberry Pi 4 now, which is our address 103. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the button. Oh, let's mute that. Don't wanna listen to that. I'm sorry, I keep chuckling. My wife's in the background going, ha ha, ha ha. <laughs> Mickey Mouse, ha ha. I digress, anyway. Well, welcome to my family. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start it up on my cell phone yet again, because it looks like it's running just fine. Okay, so there it is on the cell phone. So let's mute that, so that way we can leave it running. So there it is, running on my cell phone yet again. This is from the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's fire it up on our other devices. Okay, running on that one. Let's run it on the, on the iPad. So it's loading. It's taking a little bit to load. We'll say that, but it looks like it's running on the three other devices. Here we go. I can press play now. So it hasn't played yet. Give it a minute. I'm trying to do this all in real time. Sorry if this video is starting to get really long, but I thought it was going to be short, but then I decided to break things. So I've got, okay. So now I've got two things that are stalled out. Oh, the iPad just got going. My phone is now buffering. Oh, it's now running now. So my phone is working now. So we got the phone and everything. Okay, everybody is streaming. All right, so now let's go ahead and move over to our Raspberry Pi 4, shall we? So now that we got that going, we uh, can go down to uh, running our different commands. So let's try the end load on this one. Helps if I can spell. Let's see how we're doing here. Okay, so looks about the same we're about 30 megabits per second let's see is everything everybody's streaming right yep everything is streaming all my devices are streaming so yeah so we're about 30 megabits a second which is kind of interesting i think it fluctuates between 30 to 40 just depends on who is buffering and who is not who's you know commanding a whole ton of bandwidth or not so let's do a top on there okay so it looks like it's eating quite a bit of memory but we still have quite a bit free see we've got about four gigs of memory uh on the raspberry pi 4. uh we got about 556 megabytes free um let's see looks like there's other things uh running too on that uh looks like we still have some swap space though so we haven't run out of that yet um, so that's good. So that was to be expected. I mean, you've got, you got better hardware on the, on the Raspberry Pi 4, right? So let's go ahead and fail a hard drive, shall we? Okay. So I just powered down one of the hard drives. So that should have failed. So if we do another detail, we should see, yes, that one has been removed. 
the volume is now degraded, but it should still be running. So this stream is working just fine behind me. Uh, looks like my phone's running all right. Well, my phone just now locked up. So it's now buffering on my phone. Uh, the iPad's doing fine. The Surface, it's buffering. The phone just released. So the phone seems to be doing okay. So I think it did, it did kind of cause some hiccups. Um, now see the wired connection seems to be working just fine. I haven't seen a single buffer, a single problem with the wired connection, which is what you're seeing right here below my picture here. So I'm thinking that the wireless network is fairly stressed with those being on the wireless network. So I think it may be a deal with it all being wireless. So let's go ahead and rebuild the volume. Pseudo MDADM add to our dev MD0. We want the dev SDB1. This is what we wanna add back to it. So it's now added. So let's go back to our detail and we should see that it is now rebuilding. Well, from 7,000 minutes to pretty much just a few seconds, uh, I'd say the, the Raspberry Pi 4 definitely rebuilds a whole lot faster. This is pretty much gonna be the end of it. If you would like to stay and see the uh, network level of it, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch networks and try it again. But if you wanna stop the video here, that's fine. That's pretty much the test I did. It works great in both cases, whether it's Raspberry Pi 3 or the Raspberry Pi 4. I'm actually pretty impressed. Now, I would think if we had probably more devices and stack more stuff up, you'd start to really see the difference. I just quite literally don't have that many computers. But between one, two, three, four different devices all streaming the same content, not just different, but the same content from the same device, from the same RAID volume, three versus four, um, seems to be pretty good. Now, the question would be, after looking at the settings using the top command, Raspberry Pi 4 seems like it is probably a little bit more... Uh, has a little bit more available resources. So if you were doing other things in the background using the Raspberry Pi for other aspects or other things, maybe if you're also uploading at the same time as streaming all four of these devices and things like that, it has a little more headroom. Whereas it looks like the Raspberry Pi 3 was already with these four devices already out of swap space and almost out of memory. So I can see there being some lag and issues with Raspberry Pi 3, but that's to be expected because the Raspberry Pi 3 doesn't have the hardware that the Raspberry Pi 4 does. But so far as reading and writing from the disk and using spindle drives, no solid state drives, um, it works actually pretty darn good, believe it or not, speed wise and internet speed looks fine. So. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to continue on watching, uh, please stay with me. But if not, thank you so much. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. And thank you for all your support. Check out the t-shirts that we have down below in Teespring, as well as check out the Patreon down below. So now, continuing on, I'm going to stop and re-pick back up with the uh, network uh, test. Okay, so let's try the wired connections next. Now, I'm going to go through it fairly quick. So here's 91. So this is a Raspberry Pi. This is the Raspberry Pi 3. Okay. So, so I got the phone going, the tablet going. Okay, so the iPad's going. So we got all of them going. So let's look at the network load this time. So this is gonna be on ETH zero. So it looks like we're at about 50 megabits a second, 46 to 50 megabits a second. Looks pretty good. Everything is still rolling quite well. I probably won't do the hard drive failures. I just wanna check the performance. So there we go. So let's check our top, see how our resources are doing once that loads. Okay, so it looks like we gained a little, not really, a little bit of swap space here and there, but it looks like it's doing a lot of swapping. But I'm not seeing a degradation in the uh, in the videos. All the videos are streaming just fine. So I think that what the, the, the lag that we were seeing was probably too many wireless devices connected and it connected over a wireless. So it looks like wired is the way to go because I'm seeing no slowdown on any of the devices, nothing is buffering. Everything is doing just fine. Uh, looking at that resource menu so far as if you were wanting to do anything other than this, you would have probably some, some issues uh, doing anything that's very memory intensive. In any case, uh, let's move on to the Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, so here we are set up with the Raspberry Pi 4. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate our streams. Now I will say the videos are starting a whole, starting a whole lot faster. Uh, with the Raspberry Pi 4. So, okay, there they all are. Every single one of them is up and running. So now let's check our stats, shall we? So let's check on our ethernet. So 
So it looks like we're up to, yeah, 39, 40 megabits a second. So about the same amount of traffic uh, moving. So let's check out the top. So that boots up a whole lot quicker. Uh, kind of almost the same story. We got 100 uh, megabytes free swap space. Um, looks like it's handling it just fine. Uh, got some spikes here and there, uh, 60s and some percentages. Um, this one has a lot higher. However, the CPU can probably handle a lot more. Yeah, this is all running just fine. So it looks like wired is kind of the way to go on all this. So guys, before I make this video humongously long, like an hour long or something, glad that you uh, were able to come along for this journey. And it looks like, yeah, the next cloud works quite well. The only thing I will say that is a caveat next cloud. I hope that you're listening. I hope you made it to the end of the video. Uh, is they need an app for setting it up as a media server because currently right now, the only way to play the videos or anything like that is through the the interface, just the web interface. There's no way to play videos or anything uh, with any type of media connected device. So like if you have a smart TV or if you have a PlayStation or an Xbox or something like that, they can hook up to a media server. They don't support that currently. In any case, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, definitely hit that like button. Make sure and subscribe and ring the bell because it's, you know, the subscriptions don't mean anything anymore. So you gotta hit that bell, otherwise you won't get notified of when I upload new stuff. So do that. Um, definitely check out the t-shirts down below as well as check out my patron site. Become a patron today and you'll get some free merch, epic and legendary. Legendary, you will get some free stuff, some free swag and, and different free uh, parts and pieces as well as then if you sign up for uh, epic, then you will get uh, access to free content i just finished up i got one more video to go i know i keep saying that i need to finish it uh a, basically a series on teaching you uh c programming so if you want to check out some cool lessons by me i'll also be firing up some stuff on basic circuitry ohm's law kcl kvl all that stuff i'll be showing you some basic circuitry stuff that's going to be the next series that's going to go on and that is an exclusive for my patreon subscribers so just for a dollar a month gets you an epic subscription and gets you into all that so guys thank you so much for watching take care keep coding keep building and i will see you next time